the year uh, by surrendering ourselves and committing our lives to God so that he can make us a vessel for his honor and his glory as we um, go through this year. Um, yesterday, we we focused on uh, who was the person we were talking about yesterday, Sarah, the mother of all nations. And I know at times we the focus is on Abraham, which is fine. We're not competing here. Uh, but Sarah also played a big role. She was not just there as a wife to Abraham. And as, as, as Peter shows, she was a holy woman in herself. She was also um, enjoyed a relationship. She also enjoyed a relationship um, with God. And, uh, and she's, she's there as you reflect in a story for that miracle that we spoke about of uh, believing to a point where uh, a miracle, something that was uh, not supposed to happen, happened, not just extraordinary, but miraculous. Today, I want us to look at Dorcas. There are so many women that we could spoke, speak about, we could talk about um, Jacobet, we could talk about as well, the mother of Moses, we could talk about Ruth, we could talk about Rebecca, we could talk about um, Rahab, we could talk about Mary and Martha, those powerful theologians. We could talk about Mary, the mother of Jesus. <laughs> she was a woman. Uh, I know the Roman Catholics take the whole story of Mary too far, calling her Immaculate Mary, Mary born without sin. But we could talk about um, the widow and her offering um, that she made of her last money. Uh, but let's talk about Dorcas. Now, and, and there's no particular reason why we're choosing. We have to speak about at least one. So I don't want to say that those that I've chosen are the most important. They are not. We actually we could argue that some of those that we have not even mentioned are even more important, if you want to use the word important. But uh, what um, is common amongst all these women is that they were women of faith. Now, we have a story of Dorcas. Um, if you could just allow me here uh, to get my Bible. My Bible is not close to where I am. Thank you very much. We have a story of Dorcas. I just want to read the story of Dorcas um, so that we can provide a good background for and a context for this story. Um, Dorcas is, as you will see as we look at the story, is um, the only woman recorded uh, to have been to have been raised uh, from death. Now, maybe that's not important, but it is still a fact that um, she was the only woman that was raised from death. We have a number of uh, people that were raised from death, but Dorcas becomes the only woman that, uh, on record, it may be that there were others that were raised, but I'm just saying on, on record, and um, maybe you could remember, if you do, just write on the chat if you know of another woman that was raised from the dead. Now, let me read the story here. Uh, it starts from X 9, verse 36. It says, at Joppa, there was a certain disciples, disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did, but it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they had laid her in an upper room and since Lida, which is the place was near Joppa, uh, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent two men uh, to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he had come, they brought him to the upper room. And all the widows stood by him, weeping, showing the tunics and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. But Peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. Um, let us pray. Our kind and loving Father, we want to reflect on this beautiful story of Tabitha Dorcas. Uh, it's a story that we know. It's a story that has really motivated us. It's a story that has led to the formation of many uh, chari charity groups, Lord, many people, movements that have been based on this story to help others. Thank you, Lord, 
for the life of Tabitha. Bless us now and guide us, Lord. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Now, the story of, uh, uh, of Tabitha is one of those that are so intriguing. And um, we're going to do the best we can with the time that we have There's so much to say about, about this story. I've already indicated that she was the only woman on record that, that was raised from, from the dead. Um, I don't know what I want us to look at is who, who was Dorcas. No, not that it's a profound thing, but just following the story, who was Dorcas, just to emphasize those, those uh, aspects that I mentioned. Who was Dorcas and why was she raised? On the second one, and why was she raised? It's not very clear, but we will uh, and uh, try to um, um, think and reflect on why uh, Dorcas was raised for our, own, for our own lesson, even though it may not be 100% correct, but it can it can it can be a good lesson for all of us. Now, the raising of of, of Dorcas from death is is something very interesting. I remember there was a lady who whose husband had died and she refused. I know I know some of you may remember the story. She she would she refused to have the the, the husband buried because she said um, she believed that the Lord would raise him from the dead. I'm also, in a way, trying to answer the question why today we don't witness people being raised from the dead, except those fake ones. Uh, but I still believe that there's nothing preventing God from raising people from the dead, and there will come a time when we will act as a witness. Or maybe in other places, this may have happened. It may not have come to us. And um, so the raising of people from the dead is not a miracle confined to the to the Old Testament, but I remember saying to this, uh, uh, speaking about this story of this woman who would not bury her husband, that Lord, please don't raise that husband uh, from death, because if you do that, there's no one who will ever die. Everybody will want their dead people to be raised, and they will not bury them. They will wait and wait, uh, saying that this person was raised. Why am I? Why is mine not raised? It would be a serious problem with people not uh, hoping or praying that. They raised, the dead one would not be raised. But of course, uh, the person was not raised. Uh, maybe um, the Lord knows. I'm not saying uh, it's wrong to pray for that. We've lost our loved ones and we wish they would have been, uh, they would have been raised. But let's look at the story of, of Dorcas who was raised. And the question is, who who was Dorcas? Now let's run quickly. Uh, who, who was Dorcas uh, and why was she raised? Um, the first thing that we come across is from the story is that Dorcas was a disciple of Jesus. I like the way it is introduced in the story. It says at Joppa, Joppa is a place, there was a certain disciple. That's verse 36. It, it, it doesn't say there was a certain woman. It says there was a certain disciple. In other words, the gender of Dorcas was just accidental. What was um, very remarkable about Dorcas was not that she was a woman. Uh, what was remarkable about Dorcas was that she was a disciple and a follower of Jesus Christ. And I'm raising this point because if you look at chapter 10, verse one, it says about Cornelius, there was a certain man in Caesarea. It doesn't say there was a certain disciple because Cornelius was not yet a disciple of Christ. Of course, she was a seeker of Christ, but it says there was a certain man in, 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 in Caesarea. But but the verse uh, above that one says, but at Joppa, there was a certain disciple. I, I want to emphasize that point that discipleship takes precedence over the gender, over gender. That discipleship is a choice, but gender is somehow biological. And, and we don't choose our gender, even though at times we take so much pride in our gender as if we qualified, we studied, we did assignment and research, and we became the genders we are. But discipleship is a deliberate, intentional um, decision that we take to follow Jesus. And here, the author, Luke, in, in the book of Acts, wants to emphasize that point that we're talking here about a disciple of Jesus Christ. Actually, she was among other disciples because there were disciples who, when she died, who were to actually summon and call Peter to come, that, hey, our colleague has, has actually succumbed to death. Please can come and, and, and see. Maybe they couldn't help as, as Peter would, would have been able to do so. But here the point is very important that she was a disciple. And the disciple is one who follows Jesus Christ. In Revelation 14, verse, uh, verse I think verse 4, we are told that 
one of the characteristics of the 144,000 are those who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. Now, I'm trying to stress the point that those who are going to be resurrected, um, not necessarily now when they die, but ultimately, finally, at the end, those who are going to be resurrected are those who follow Jesus Christ. Because as, as they have learned to follow Jesus Christ here on earth, they will follow him also in the new earth. They will follow him also in heaven. In other words, the following us being disciples of Jesus Christ, the followers of Christ, is a preparatory exercise for, for us to be able to do the same in heaven. If we do not follow, follow Jesus Christ means surrendering our lives. It means doing his will. It means asking ourselves before we act, what would Jesus do? Now, these are the followers of Jesus Christ. That's very important that Dorcas uh, was a disciple of Jesus Christ. Of course, there were many other disciples of Jesus Christ who have died. You can mention James. You can mention John the Baptist. You can mention others who died, but they were not raised from death. Actually, including Paul. I think Paul at some point was raised from the dead, but let me not go to that point. Peter and others died at some point. They were not raised from the dead. But, but why was this one raised? I'm going to give you a, a reason for that one. But for now, let's look at who was, who was this woman. The second thing that we hear about this woman is that she was full of good works. Dorcas was not just a disciple. Yeah, there are disciples. Now, if, if by being a disciple, it is gi a given that one is full of good works, then Luke would not have told that that she was full of good works. She would have just said, she, he would have just said she was a disciple. You know that a disciple is full of good works. But this disciple, uh, named by the name of Dorcas, was full of good works. Not just a good person, but full of good works. We are not told about her faith. The, the record doesn't say she was full of faith. She was a, a, a woman of faith. But it is implied in the statement that says she was full of, 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 of good works. And uh, in James, by the way, James 2, where she wants to talk about the importance of faith, um, She's, uh, James uh, seems to be indicating that uh, an indication of one's faith is seen in her works, in, in her works on, or in their works. That faith without works is dead. So when the Bible says um, this woman was full of good works, that means she was full of faith, full, full of faith. Faith uh, that is in abundance is seen in works that are also abundant. Other disciples probably were known for performing miracles. Um, they were good speakers. They were preachers um, like Paul and others and Peter. Uh, some were probably good singers, but Dorcas was full of good works. No, so we don't know Dorcas as a preacher. We are not told of Dorcas as a healer, but Dorcas served the poor, uh, the poor in her community. She was full of good works. She did good and we know that because those that were the recipients were there when she died and showing evidence of what she did for them. Now, you may not be a preacher, you may not be known for this or that, but you can still be full of good works. That is why we have a record of a person who was not a preacher, who did not wake up in the morning. We're not even told that she was a prayer warrior. We're not even told that she would, um, as like I said, she was a teacher, but she was there full of good works, doing good to those who were around 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 him. This is who Dorcas was. But the question then still remains, why was she raised from the dead? Because there were other people who may have done good things as well, but they were not raised from the dead. When the Bible says, if we love one another, they will know that you are my disciples. And it looks like this is very important. If people don't know that we are disciples by us preaching, and the devil can do that. Actually, in James, as the devil believes and she trembles, it is our discipleship is seen in how we treat each other. Each other means your wife, each other means your husband, each other means your children, each other means your neighbor, each other means brothers and sisters, each other means those who do you bad, those who have, um, um, who mock you, those who despise you. It, discipleship, that you are a Christian, it is seen in how you treat those. And I ask you, who was this woman and why was um, um, he, she raised from the dead? Here it says, she was a disciple, number one. She was a disciple. Number two, she was uh, full of good works. And I would like to challenge you and say, what are you full of? What am I full of? Um, full of pride, full of self, full of whatever. But this, this lady, this woman, this disciple was full of good works. And Matthew 5, is it Matthew 5, 16 that says, uh, let your light so shine, not just shine, but su shine in such a way that people may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You see, you can't hide good works. Good works are not supposed to be, to be, to be, to be um, in secret. 
good works must be seen. No, no, we're not doing them for, for us to be seen, but just by doing good works, you cannot do them in secret. You cannot say this one is confidential. Good works are by nature supposed to be seen. And I'm going to say that again. I'm not saying we do the all so that we can be seen. Good works are good. And, and to be full of such is not bad. We need to get to a point, beloved, where we are known for something that we are doing. It is good to be a, a prayer warrior. It is good to be a preacher. It is good to do all these things and worship God. But our worship, if it ends there, but does not make people see us and glorify God, see our good works and glorify God. People need our commitment and our surrender is good, but if it doesn't lead us to a point where people can see, no, when you are dead, people must be able to list things that you you bless them with. I know this sounds like you are proud. This sounds like you you are just um um. Uh, doing your your good works to be seen and and the bible is, is against that but all i'm saying is your light must so shine that's what the bible says so that people may see your good works and good works and this is and this is who docas was a person full of uh of good works now she uh was helpful you know um her life was spent uh at least part of her life was spent um, helping the poor. Uh, it says that they were the widows. So it makes you doubt, it makes you think maybe she was a widow, she was a single woman, uh, but she was. She seems to have focused on the widows because then they, those were the recipients appear to have been, to have been, uh, to have been widows. Now, which means actually, uh, there's something here that I need to say that Dorcas may have been very poor herself. I know that because she did not have money to buy clothes. She did not I shower those people with clothes. She actually sat down and make those clothes, which means she was also ministering from her own situation, from her own challenge. It, her being poor, her status did not inhibit, it did not prevent her from reaching out to those who were poor. And we have no excuse to say, but I don't have money. The day I have money, I will help so many people. But it's the little that we have that we can, we can expand it, we can we can, we can be creative and see what we can do with the little that we have. She, instead of having a, a, a wardrobe full of clothes, mothers, wives, I'm not speaking to my wife here, our mothers and our wives and our sisters, instead of having a wardrobe full of clothes, she shared those clothes. She knitted, she sat down and helped the poor. When you are dead, how many clothes you had is not important. It's how many you clothe. The Bible says, I was naked and you did not clothe me. But Dorcas, Dorcas was there and she made a difference. Who was Dorcas? Um, Dorcas died and she was raised back to life. Not everybody who dies must be raised to life, beloved. There are people who, when they die, we remain in peace. They don't. They may not rest in peace, but we rest in peace. There are people who, when they die, we celebrate, even if we may not do it loudly. There are people who, in their lives, are a, I don't want to say a nuisance, but are, are more like, you know, they make life miserable for those around them. And I, it's not like I, I know those people. I'm just saying theoretically, there may be such people. But, but Dorcas was one of those when she died that you wanted her to be raised. You just did not want her to die. You did not want her to remain dead because her life was a blessing to others. There are people who, when they die, you only know that they uh, they were alive when 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 they died. Um, but when they are living, we we don't <laughs> know so much because the life is not impactful. Uh, this woman was a blessing, and she was raised back to life. I'm getting closer to the question: Why? So, so it, it happens that as, as this woman died, um, they refused to bury her, of course. Uh, Peter was within uh, close proximity. They called for Peter. I like this thing. It's as if Peter was waiting for this woman to die. It's as if there was a provision made for the healing of this woman. Now, things don't are just not coincidental with God, that God had arranged Peter to be close by because God knew that Dorcas is going to die and that people would be calling for Peter and, and, and arranged for Peter to be there. So Peter was there at the right time. And I want to stress this point. Before we get into serious challenges, before we lose our loved ones, before we even suffer loss, the Lord already 
I promise you, if you look back with the eye of faith, you will see that the Lord had already made a provision for your situation. The Lord goes ahead of us to make sure that the things that we go through will not destroy us, that those around us will not be disheartened when they see us going through this. The Lord has a way of being in the valley of the shadow of death before we get there to make sure that we can be able to walk through. When this woman died, Peter was not very far. I call that the blessing of proximity. And we can say a lot about, about that. Now, who was this woman uh, and why was she raised to, to life? Um, now, there's something very interesting about this woman. Uh, and, and in South Africa, we'll call it a, a protest. Uh, a protest. I mean, we like doing protest. We like engaging in protest. When this woman was dead, it would, it would appear that these widows, these service recipients, beneficiaries, refused to, to, to allow her. They refused to bury her. They said, there's no way we are burying this person. Actually, uh, they were carrying placards, and the placards were the clothes that she made for them. They were there. They refused. They were crying us. Look at what she did when she was alive. Even though when she was alive, there was evidence. So, sorry, even though when even though she was dead, there was evidence that she was once alive by what she did. Remember, we said she was a woman full of good works. They refused to let her remain dead. It was out of selfish reasons that they wanted her to be to be brought back to life. I, I must say that. They didn't say, oh, poor Dorcas, she must come back to life. Oh, she was a good woman. We don't want her to die. She must enjoy life. No, 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 no. They were enjoying life when Dorcas was alive. So they wanted to continue enjoying life when they were crying. By the way, crying is selfish. When we cry, we're not crying for the one who's dead. We're crying for us who are remaining. We are, we are crying because we were receiving a blessing uh, while this person was alive, whatever that blessing is. And so when they wanted Dorcas to brought back to life, they wanted Dorcas to continue assisting them, to continue helping them, to continue serving them. And so with Dorcas dead, they knew that they are facing a bleak winter. They are facing their future it become very bleak now because there were not many Dorcases. If there was, if there were many Dorcases who were doing this work, these people would not have cried the way they did because they would have said, "Oh, she did a good work," but at least would be taken care of. Now, there were not many, and one of the reasons why we cry so much when we lose our loved ones because there's no one else. If it's my son. Uh, even if I have another son, but not that one, she's not that one. But it's the it's it's the life that we live, it's the impact that we make that makes people to feel selfish and to say, there's no way we can let that person die. Now I want to ask you a question, as I'm asking myself, if you were to die, how many people would 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 protest? You know, they protested so much that God was moved in heaven and said, We cannot allow this woman to remain. They, they registered their discontentment. They prayed. Now, maybe let me say something quickly there, that when we pray, we are saying what has happened is not normal. And, and I, I'm going to say this again. Prayer is a refusal to accept the status quo. When we pray, even if our prayer appears not to have been answered, when we pray for our sick ones and they die, it doesn't mean there was something wrong with prayer. It means we did the right thing. When we pray, we are saying, God, we are praying to you because what is happening here, what is transpiring now is not your, your, your doing. When we pray to God, it is because God is not implicated in the act. When we pray, we are making a statement about God. When you pray because you are sick, you are saying God does not want us to be sick. When you are praying because you are unemployed, you are saying God does not want me to be unemployed. No, when we don't pray, it's like we are saying, why, why, why waste your time in praying? Because God is, is responsible for this life, for, for this situation, for this condition. Prayer is a form of protest. Prayer is a form of resistance. Prayer is a way of saying, God is not part of this. That's why we pray. Even if our prayers don't materialize, then actually yield to what we want. But we have made a statement that to the one we prayed to, that God is not um, guilty of what we are going through. All right, quickly, who was this woman and why was she raised from the dead? Uh, I'm going to give you the answer. Why was she brought back from the dead? Now, remember, um, you may have your own reasons, but I'm going to give you this one, which is very important. Now, let's go back to that point I raised. She died. They wanted her back because they felt that there's no one to fill her shoes. There's no one to do what she was doing. 
uh, it was big for the mourners. Uh, but there comes a time where we die. And even though she may have been raised now, Dorcas died at some point. She did not live. She did not live forever. She was brought, she was brought back to life. And, and, and for me, I think the reason why she was brought back to life because her death created a crisis of leadership. Her death created a crisis because there was no one to take after. There was no one to take over from where, from where she left. So she had to be brought back to continue because these people now were stranded. These people were, were in trouble. These people would have no one to, to help them with. Now, nah, what's the lesson there? Uh, I'm not saying this may have been the case with Dockers, but it could have been. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. What's the lesson that we we can learn? And the and the the lesson is um, Dockers was brought back to continue the work she had started. If Dockers had trained some people to do that work, yes, they would have mourned, but there would have been no need to bring her back because there are others to continue the work. Uh, in other words. There is something called dying prematurely. She died prematurely. Um, she was she died prematurely, and there was no one to take over. And by by being raised from the dead, now follow me here. By being raised from the dead, it was to make sure that she continues and make sure that now before she dies, now again there must be somebody to do that. So what am I trying to say? When we do these good works, people, let's train others. Don't just be the only one doing that. Because now you're going to die, and when you die, that will be the end of your work. Dorcas should not just uh, be the one who, who makes clothes for people. She must also teach people how to make clothes. She must actually raise other Dorcases. In other words, if my ministry is to help the widows, I must help the widows also have their own ministry of helping other widows so that my death will not create a crisis. This is very important in our doing good. Maybe that's the lesson we need to learn even from the story of Dorcas, that the, God may not bring us back to life, but we leave a big gap when we die without making sure, empowering others. Now, I'm not even saying that's the reason why Dorcas did that. I'm just saying at times we may find joy and glory in just doing the good works and be the only ones who do the good works and be the only ones who knows where the fruit and veg is where you get the fruit and veg. Be the only one who has got the connection. Be the only ones who know the phone numbers of these people that are that are helping us. So that when you are dead, we don't know how now. Where do we get all this? Because you are the only one who did that. Remember, beloved, if we are helping others, we will not always be there. So as we help others, let's make it possible for us, even for others to also to be roped in so that there can be more hands, so that even if other hands die, there are other hands who will continue doing the work. And I'm saying this to some of us who are doing a marvelous work. Remember, in doing that work, there will come a time where you may, you may have to die. But if you train others, if you make sure that if you are a docus, if you have been given this gift of helping others, please ask the Lord to help you bring as many people who are helpful as possible. If you are a singer, train as many as you can who are singers. If you are a preacher, train as many as you can who are going to be preachers so that in your life, as you live, you will replicate, you'll duplicate, you'll multiply yourself so that even when you die, we can look at what we have done and say that this, what he started, will never come to an end because he made sure that there are others who do it. May God bless us, beloved, as we do all that we can. Remember, you are alive. God has healed you. God has protected you for a good reason so that you can live an impactful life, not for your own selfish reasons, but for others, so that when you die finally, it will be because you have fulfilled your assignment. No one should die before the assignment has been accomplished. Our death is not just accidental. It is a death, death like that of John the Baptist. You have done that which you had, you had come to do. Now you can rest in peace. And everybody can say, let him rest now, because he has actually accomplished that which you had done. You should be able to say before you die, it is finished. What I was given to do, I did it. Believe there are people who die prematurely. They die without actually living uh, the, uh, the reason or uh, fulfilling the purpose they live for. And may God bless us, beloved. Let us pray our kind and loving Father. Thank you for Dorcas. Thank you for the life that we have just reflected on. And as we know, there are so many Dorcas's in this platform and elsewhere doing wonderful work, dear Father. May we not forget to 
to make sure that we raise as many doctors as possible. And may we be known for the good works that we do. And may we be known not just by uh, who we are and our accomplishment, but that we are the followers of Christ. Bless us now in the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.